welcome to Today in Woburn. I'm your host, Samantha Stone, and we are on the beautiful library lawn today, enjoying the gorgeous weather. We have some very special guests today. We have the mayor joining us as always, and we have also a couple of surprise special guests. Captain Jack Sparrow will be joining us, and we have a load of fabulous questions. But before we get to Captain Jack and the mayor, I definitely want to say a very special welcome to Dory. Welcome, Dory. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. Well, I am here in a bittersweet way, so I am very excited um, that you will be having a wonderful new opportunity and a new library system, but we are going to miss you tremendously. I am going to miss Woburn so much. I have been in mourning for, for quite some time now. And it's, been, it's been so wonderful working in Woburn and working um, during the, uh, during the renovation and the reopening. It's been like a, re a really, really special time. Well, one of the things that I've seen you do um, on Facebook is you have just done an exceptional job at helping us get to know all the other staff members and stuff, but I thought it would be fun to just take a look back. Tell us about your first day working at the library. Oh my goodness. So my first day working at the library was at 36 Cummings Park you hadn't been there it was like a strip mall and um, but I when I went I went in the director at the time in, introduced me to every single staff person from Cirque to Children's to um, the, the shelving volunteers um, and it was so immediate um, immediately obvious from the beginning just how close-knit a staff it was and I think it was I mean I think it's like this alchemy of this of this just the way Woburn is but also the um, the moving of the library, like they'd already been, they'd already brought the library into that temporary space and they were preparing for this enormous, um, beautiful new renovation. And um, they'd, they'd been through so much together fighting for it and figuring out how to do it. And it was um, just obvious from, from the beginning. That's what a wonderful treat. Well, this, you leave in a very different building than where you started. Exactly. And I'm wondering, what's your favorite nook in the library? Like when you have a quiet moment to yourself, where would you go? <laughs> you know, it's funny that my, my favorite nook is, I mean, the old library is amazing and it's beautiful. And while we were closed and moving back in, I got to go upstairs. I know everyone else you know, got to in third grade and, and everything, but to that, the apartment upstairs. So someday you might find me, find me living there. But, but, um, but obviously the children's room is, is my favorite and, and it's where my heart is. I love it. That's incredible. And one of the things that I'm um, very excited about with the renovation is it did give us, as my kids were growing up, they were in the basement mm -hmm. and the little confined space. You would go down the spiral yeah. stairs and now we have this beautiful space for children's programming. Tell us a little bit about what that has done for us as a community having this extra oh space. It has been, I mean, it's, it's such a, such a like night and day difference. Um, and what's been amazing is just how much, um, well, I was doing the math recently and we did in the year from when we opened in March to when we closed in March, um, we had done over 600 programs in, in youth services alone and we'd had 22,000 participants. And, um, and clearly this was not just my, my effort, this was a whole staff effort. We had um, staff running, every staff member in Children's ran two to four programs a week and um, it was just this amazing um, ch way to bring the community back into the library because a lot of people hadn't been using our library before that, that there just wasn't the space for, for regular story times, for after school programs, that it was just, it was limited entirely by space, not by, my, by desire to do the programs. Um, and um, so I know that like, we have this amazingly dedicated staff and I'm really hopeful that I know there are limits right now because of COVID, but right now there are also limits because we haven't been allowed to do programming. And it's been um, like that I, I personally am, am leaving because I haven't been able to do any of my usual job duties. And I really, um, I really hope that, that the staff will be allowed to go back to doing what they were doing and what they were doing so well, um, because it's, um, it's really heartbreaking to have this um, community connection cut off for for no reason. Yeah. Well, we're very much looking forward to all the yeah. new programming that's good. I'm confident, I'm an optimist by, <laughs> by nature. So I'm, <laughs> I'm very, I, so. very, very excited about what the potential is for us. Yeah, um, in terms of your new, tell us about your new role. We will miss you tremendously, but we're excited that you have something wonderful to go to. So tell yeah. us about that. No, it's true. I, I 
would not leave this job unless it was for something that I am truly excited about. I'm going to be a branch librarian, so I'm really excited. It's a, a neighborhood branch, um, and it's um, so it's going to be a lot more family programming. A lot of, I love um, because we did so much programming. I told you. This t last time when you had me on the show, I was talking about the uh, the senior center and the the programming um, that is able to do there. So I'm really excited to bring some of that intergenerational programming um, to another to another library, um, and and it's great because they have um, it's used by a lot of families, so I still will get to do the, the children's programming and, and everything I love. Okay. Well, we hope you visit yeah. often. Oh, you and know I will. I know <laughs> that there are going to be lots of many, yeah. many goodbyes officially, but I wanted to at least give you a today in Woburn goodbye. And my um, my friend, um, Caitlin Skinner, who is oh. way more crafty and talented than I am, That's I asked beautiful. her to put together uh, a little bit of uh, best wishes for you. So Thank Caitlin gets you. all the credit. She, uh, she, she tucked she the kids in last. She has some she does, <laughs> and she was really glad to do that. So I'm oh, sure she wonderful. and lots of other people will have the chance to say a proper goodbye. Yeah, but I hope so. While we were on the library lawn today, I couldn't imagine <laughs> not <laughs> having the chance to wish you well. And thank you for all the wonderful programs and um, bringing us back to the library. I think that was a really important place. While we were in that transition period, it was a long time. Yeah, it was two years with without this building open, yeah. So, but thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you so wonderful. much for joining us, Dory. And so please, please me. stay in touch with us. I will. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. I am so excited today. So I had a pleasure of wishing uh, Dory well on her new endeavors and her new challenges and adventures that she's going to be on. But today on the lawn, we are very, very fortunate because we have Captain Jack Sparrow with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Why, thank you. Why, thank you, love. Why, thank you. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow of... Uh, the Black Pearl, I'm sure you've heard the stories or rumors or what have you. Oh my goodness, so many. We have so many questions for you, but before we dig in and do all the fun stuff, I wanted to introduce, well, this isn't not fun, this is also fun. We have the director of our library, Bonnie, with us. And um, I'm actually really excited because we have a lot of new programming that's coming out, and I'm so glad that we could be on the library today and talking about what's gonna be coming up. Great, yeah, it's so great, great. to be out here on the lawn in this beautiful weather, and we've got so many great programmings. Coming up. Excellent, excellent. I love it. So um, I want to talk a little bit about something a little serious first, which is last time we spoke, you mentioned that we would be doing a memorial service for the gentleman whose life Kameers, was lost absolutely. Um, in the construction of our beautiful library. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us an update about what the plans are for that? Yeah, um, our board chair, Richard Mahoney, has been working very closely with the family to um, get a bench and grave that will go back and sit in that particular area. And then um, talking with the family about the timing and what seems most right for them as far as right. holding that event. You know, Great. So. Well, well, I'm very glad to hear the family's involved and oh, we're working with 100%. them to do this yeah, well. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I also noticed something as we're talking about the library build, and I think it's probably just the website isn't updated, but on the website I saw that the building project, we have like a little page that we were following along. Yeah. It says we're at 90 percent. and. Uh, is, is that just outdated or is there more work being done that um, we don't know about? It's outdated. Yeah, you know, that's we're, okay. We're going through and just kind of cleaning up yeah. the website actually this fall and, you know, um, right. doing a little I bit of redesign. I was just a little excited. I was wondering what was coming next. Oh, so uh, thank you In a thank library there's that. always something coming next, yeah. but yeah, no. Well, I am very excited because we have some wonderful outdoor programming that's happening for those who are not yet comfortable going inside the library and also allows us to do some things that um, current regulations don't let us do sure. because we can't be in buildings. Um, I know we have outdoor yoga, and then I saw a fly casting class. Tell us about that. Yeah, so New England uh, River Service is coming down, and they're going to teach people how to fly fish and fly cast on our lawn. We have enough space to do it, and we thought it would be something that you Sorry. maybe don't have a chance to try any other time, and, uh, you know, there's been a lot of interest in it, so... Well, that is really super fun. I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I've never fly fished in my life, but we do have a place on the lake, and so yeah. we'll sort of cast off the dock. And I'm terrible at it, and my husband makes fun of me all the time. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm going to see if I can pop down. I saw you had a whole bunch of yeah, times that's great. That were you can sign up for a time slot and give it a go, and uh, it should be it. a lot of fun. You that's know? that's going to be awesome. Yeah. What other programming do we have coming up, either um, virtually or outside here on the lawn? Uh, we have a great author series, which I'll mention. We're sponsoring with great. a variety of different um, libraries. Uh, Frederick Bachman, he wrote A Man Called sure. Ove, is talking about his new book. It's kind of a poignant sure. comedy called um, Anxious People. And then um, so. we also have a. Uh, I think Kyle Mills is going to be talking about 
That's um, a new book. It's a political thriller. Um, I think it's True Power, but I could have the title not exactly right. I love um, it. We've got uh, Qigong on Wednesday mornings, another lawn great. program outside, which should be great. We're particularly excited about, we're having a drum circle for kids, 8 to 12. You know, to kind of practice with uh, percussion, you know, making some rhythm and beats. And uh, great. that should be a lot of fun. Um, we have a, a bunch of standing programs with Miss um, Barbara and Miss Natalie um, in both bilingual programs. One in English and Portuguese great. and one in English and Spanish. And great. Um, We might have to have one in pirate, right? Which maybe would be great. We, maybe we can get the captain to come out and do story time one, uh, one of these it days. It would be a wonderful week, particularly with Talk Like a Pirate Day yeah. coming up, you know? And uh, That yeah. would be so much fun. So, so much going That's on. Great. You know? That's great. Yeah. So I know restrictions have um, made it difficult to have the same level of programming that we've had in the past. Um, but we are starting to see that ramp up. Yeah. What do you anticipate, sort of generally speaking, over the fall, assuming um, regulations and things stay the same as they are? Will we see lots and lots more programming happening? Or yeah, we continue to ramp it up. You know, closely watching the you know the governor's okay. guidelines. You know, mm-hmm. there was like a little pause when he kind of set back the yeah. um, outdoor requirements. So you know, we're keeping an eye on it because okay. safety, obviously, of you know yes. patrons and staff is our number one priority. Yeah, of you course. You can kind of see it fill in, and you know, we're excited about the possibilities. You know, we're starting to work on Halloween and like, what's that going to look like this year? And like, how can we, yes. you know, have some fun events around that? And, yes, um, so. because we all need our candy corn yeah. and yeah. and all that fun stuff. And you know. Um, you know, certainly Woburn is uh, famous for Halloween parade, which we won't be able to have this right. year. So having other types of activities will be wonderful to, to make up for that. Yeah, just to see like different that. ways we can come together as a community and celebrate. Yeah. You know? I love it. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about is um, there will be a lot of students who are doing a fair amount of their yes. learning remotely this year, whether they're full remote or in the hybrid mm-hmm. model. What ways can the library help support those students and those families? Sure. Um, we depending on what level, you know, like mm-hmm. we've, we're anticipating a lot of um, young adults who are in college, mm-hmm. and, you know, coming in to use the study spaces to yep. set up in the library to do research, that type of thing. Um, we're working with the schools to kind of, as they kind of evolve their model and go back, we actually have two of the STEM coordinators from the elementary school working out of the library. So we have to continue those conversations and really support families with what they need going forward. Yep. It, it's such a challenging time for everyone. Yeah. and to figure out what the new normal is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Um, I have such a hard time using the word normal, but uh, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, sort it's of all the adjustments right, is, that, we're, it, that we're making. So um, I'm glad to hear that. I also know that um, one of the things I've had some um, parents who I'm friendly with who have reached out, who are part of CPAC, mm-hmm. and they have particular um, concerns and challenges with students who may struggle with change a little bit, sure. where we're outside a routine, some of the physical spaces in the building they're used to, they, they can't access right. today. What are some ways that we can um, provide some specific programming maybe, or just communication to those families who might need a little bit more of that intimate personal touch than yeah. we might normally provide otherwise? In our discussions with uh, families who have reached out, you know, we recommend uh, the accommodation form on the website. Okay. They can fill that out to kind of give us more information about kind of what you're seeking, you know, because every family is different, every family yep. has different needs, and like, how can we best support that going forward? Um, right. That would probably be the way. It is frustrating, right. you know, not to have access to the same spaces in the same ways that we've had yep. in the past, you know, yep. and I think um, yep. everyone's struggling with that. We're all eager to get 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 back to that. Absolutely. But it, so, um, just for my own benefit, so when somebody fills that out, does, does yourself or someone else from the library contact them, or what, what kind of happens at that point? They do, actually. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. And then they, so that's good. So it's a kind of a, they'll be able to have a personal conversation. Absolutely. And, with a, you know, library staff member about kind of what feels right for their family yeah. and what kind of information they might need. Yeah. Great. I love it. Well, I'm so glad that we are joining. Anything else you'd like to add before we turn our attention to pirate well, I'm a little things. intrigued about the pirate, <laughs> I have to admit, you know, but <laughs> who wouldn't yeah, be, right? That's so, right. Just that we have a lot, you know, um, going on this fall at the library and Great. we continue to ramp up with, with different things. And, Great. Uh, well, I'm so excited that you joined us today. Please stay. I will. Because I, I know how, we're going to have lots and lots of yeah. questions yeah. here. Yeah. And um, I I have to say, yes, Do I need to be manacles, uh, flapping irons? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trusting you. Do I have your word? You have my word, especially with the uh, elbow of justice right over here. <laughs> I'm very glad that no we have. All right, no all right, good, Relax. good. We'll yeah. let you sneak out the back before the authorities come. Much appreciated. <laughs> That's great. 
So I, I have had some very entertaining questions come for me. Um, one of the things that came up multiple times from multiple people is people really want to know if you're friends with Captain Morgan of the rum fame. And I'm, mm. I'm not sure that Captain Morgan is a real person like you, but we at least need to ask. Uh, Captain Morgan, uh, uptight codfish, <laughs> blooming cockroach, slimy toad. Nah. So does that mean friends? No. No, no, no I just no. wanted to make sure. Not quite enemies, but friends, no, no, it's of reach. I love it. I love it. So, um, it makes good rum, though. Very. So let's talk about that. So you are seen with your rum. Is that a home-brewed rum, or is there a place that you frequent around Woburn to supply, resupply yourself? I get in touch with the local rum runners, and then they uh, supply me the rum. Yes. Good. Good. That's very important. So you haven't always been in Woburn, although for some of us it feels like we've been graced by your presence for a very long time. Much Bef appreciated. Before you sailed into our fair town, yes. where did you come from? Uh, well, well, the crew of the Pearl, the Black Pearl, the fastest ship in the Caribbean, we were sailing in the, the Caspian Sea. Came upon a, a hurricane, terrible hurricane. But as the smell wafted into our nostrils, we realized it was no hurricane. It was the beastie, the Kraken, if you've heard of the Kraken. I, of course, saw the Kraken dead. Surprisingly, it was not dead, it was hibernating, sleeping deeply or deeply sleeping, either one. So I was unable to go back to the island of the Pelagostos and hide from the Kraken. So I figured uh, Wuben Town was the next best uh, option. Yes, people would not expect to find you here. I know all about this sordid underbelly of uh, Woburn Town. <laughs> we do have it. We do have a reputation. That's right. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, excellent. Well, I am um, very excited that you're sitting here chatting with us today. I, we do. Yes. Let me establish a few uh, uh, ground rules. Yes, please. I'm a pirate, so I refuse to uh, incriminate myself. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, I'm a liar, a thief, and a scoundrel. So, so let's just get it on, just exactly. get it on the table exactly. right now. I'm an open book with a few uh, ripped out pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my most important, this is a personal question for me. All right. Your eye makeup, the yes, black yes, eye makeup, yes. is always perfect. And I'd like, I'm trying to understand how I can replicate, replicate that for myself. What do you do? How do you make it so perfect? Well, it's based on the Persian nomads who believe uh, the eye makeup or the eye uh, blackened eyes gives you better vision. Ah. Also makes your hair stronger. Makes your hair stronger? Indeed, indeed. So we locks are uh, full <laughs> of strength, right? But uh, we use a setting powder. Setting uh, powder. So you can throw a bucket of water in the face and this should be uh, and so you can, fine and you fancy, should, right? Yeah, because no one would ever want to throw a bucket of water in your face, however. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, you are seen no. about, please, we never want to stand in the way between the captain and his rum. That would be horrible. Uh, you were seen walking around town quite a lot. And it's, um, it, we're, I'm a little afraid you're becoming a little too well known, right? We don't really want strangers coming to our fair town just to, you know, get a, a captain sighting um, because that would give away your hiding spot. Mystique. That's right. Um, but um, I am curious, um, when you're not in Woburn, where do you find yourself? Oof. Aboard, uh, aboard the Pearl, the Black Pearl, the fastest ship in the Caribbean, a ship with a blackened hull, a ship with tattered black sails, a ship crewed by the damned, a ship captained by a man so despicable, hell itself spat him. <laughs> well, we're glad you find yourselves here so often. Ah, we went down. So Ram shackle of a town. Right? <laughs> um, I wanted to, um, you know, one of the folks, so, we know that when you are, I'm assuming, there are times in your life where you don't want people to recognize you. Indeed. Right? And so rumor has it, when you don't want to be recognized, that you have an alter ego, Rex, yes. that wanders Woburn and goes about your daily business, as most Woburn residents might. What, is, what does Rex do during their, his day? Might we bump into Rex somewhere ever? Eh, lazy good for nothing. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that, eh? I find that difficult to believe. Well, let me say this, uh, Rex, to be out of character, Rex is a uh, mellow, mellow guy, so he can put on the Jack Sparrow costume 
and it's kind of step out of, outside of myself and become the uh, clandestine, uh, swashbuckling chevalier that Pac, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow is, eh? I love it. Indeed, indeed. Does Rex or Captain ever do other types of theater or are you sort of fully committed to? Well, to tell you the truth, there's two characters that I would love to play. Uh, the international man of mystery, uh, Austin Powers. Eh? Oh, I can uh, see Indeed, that. indeed. Uh, a Beetlejuice. 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 Those two would be uh, me favorites. Ah, oh, well, we might have to find a way to try and get all three of you together. That would be a real challenge, wouldn't Perhaps it? Perhaps the, uh, the glorious parade. Uh, one year will change it up a bit. Eh? I love it. Well, I think we would all have a lot of fun with that. That's really great. Um, Bonnie, do you have questions for our captain? Bonnie, well, uh, Bonnie last. Ah, uh, how do you celebrate Talk Like a Pirate Day? Uh, with rum. <laughs> with rum. <laughs> <laughs> always with, always with rum. I love it. Sure, I'll take some. Why not? Want to get you a separate cup so you're not sharing, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And for those of you who uh, our mayor Scott has joined us today, we're going to get to some some questions in a moment. But um, I have assured the captain that he's safe here today, and he won't call the authorities no on way. him. No way. No, it's great yeah. to be in your presence today, Captain. Thank you, sir. Great to meet you. Yeah. I yep. love it. For those who might want to arrange, um, and not just take by chance that they spot you through town, Indeed. which um, we know to honk and wave and, and such, but they want to um, have a more purposeful meeting with you. Indeed. What's the best way for them to get in touch? Hmm. Well, the captain is a bit uh, technically unsavvy, so, so we email uh, Greek Captain Jack at the Gmail, or Instagram on the magic compass uh, at Greek Jack Star. I love it. That's perfect. Send me a message and we'll do a little uh, chit chat. Do a little chit chat. Can, things can be arranged. Exactly. I Once love it. Struggle, uh, finish off. That's right. So, if you had to imagine how Rex would look at the world right now, and Rex were to evaluate his alter ego captain, um, would he think that you are sort of inspired by the character itself or by the Johnny Depp? performance of the character. Uh, Johnny Depp, God bless him, eh? He's been put to the ringer and uh, he's come out fairly unscathed. A few missing digits perhaps, eh? But uh, the captain is, uh, he's done for Hollywood piracy what no one has accomplished, eh? The last 40 years we've had maybe, what, Goonies, uh, Muppet Pirate Treasure. Besides that, not much. Captain Sparrow, reinvented the whole piracy genre, I'd say. So, but cheers to uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Absolutely, cheers indeed. I love it, that's great. All uh, right, great. Um, I think I have one more question before I let you get on your, your merry way. And, um, and that is, if you, have you calculated how much of walking around Woburn you've done? Because you're mm. out and about all the time and we're very fortunate to see you there. Are we talking uh, nautical miles? Yes, of course we're talking <laughs> nautical miles. Is there any other well, yeah, What else would she need? Come on. No idea. No, no idea. idea. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. We'll keep track of <laughs> Why would you care, right? I love it. I love it. On an average week, you are um, out and about. I know I've seen you um, uh, at least a couple times a yeah, week, right? A couple times, eh? yeah. Indeed. That's wonderful. So do you consider yourself like a, a night person, a daytime? Like when is your, when are you most comfortable and when do you like to be out and about the most? Oh, well, I mean, sleeping patterns tend to be two weeks on, two weeks off. <laughs> That's perfect. Hibernate for two weeks and then uh, appear and do my thing, eh? I as they, as they love say. it. Indeed. I love it. Well, we're so excited. You do have some keys and I'm curious, are those the keys to anything in particular? Are the keys to the Black Pearl? The Black Pearl and uh, this one, uh, how much do you know of David Jones? I know a little bit, not, a mu not enough. Hey, well, tell then, us, uh, tell us more. Oh, David Jones? Please. A great sailor. <sighs> David Jones, a tentacle uh, fellow, eh? Fellow of the curse uh, that vexes all men, eh? What'd be that? A hey, woman, eh? Woman. So, David Jones, uh, has been a menace to uh, the seas for near 10 years. So with the cracking on my tail, 
David Jones is, uh, will keep him a uh, good distance away. Let's just say that, eh? I love it. I love we'll talk it. more in private about David Jones. Okay, we'll keep it a, we'll keep it a secret. We've got scouts in the back of the library. Indeed, keep indeed. It, keep I saw them. I saw them. <laughs> indeed. Thank I you, did sir. have one very um, adorable young man ask me on my way over here today if you had a parrot. Hmm. A parrot? A parrot. I knew because a monkey. in their mind, every, sure. right? It's a monkey, right? No parrot, a monkey, an undead monkey. Can't stand Because everyone the thing. should, you of know, course, have an undead monkey, right? Undead <laughs> monkey. He asked me to ask you about any jewelry you might be willing to spare. <laughs> But uh, no, no parrot or monkey, undead monkey. I'm going to now check everything and make yeah. sure when you leave, I still have it on me, right? It's called the sticky fingers. Uh. Yeah. yeah. The undead monkey is uh, unfortunately always out and about somewhere. Can't keep, Can't keep track of it. He's not inclined to no, follow no, instructions, no. right? No, no, has a mind of its own, runs off, dilly-dally. I, do, knows, uh. I love it. So on um, Halloween parade this year, unfortunately, will not be able to happen. But I'm certain that, um, I'm hopeful, I should say, not certain, that we might see you out and about that day giving cheer around town. Well, the captain tends to have his own uh, parade when he walks about. Right? <laughs> so we figure it might as well be an easy thing we could try and manufacture. Right? Yeah. So we'll figure something out with the gentleman to me. Right? <laughs> we'll figure something out, sir. That's right. Scott will always, well, always yeah, support the captain. We, we must, uh, take heed and caution and we get past this uh, scourge that we're involved in now. So well, and I thank you. by the rules, eh? Yes, and I thank you. And I saw that you had a mask on when you first sat yes, down, yes, so indeed, indeed, course, um, course. you were um, even even cautious and, you know, even, even the captain understands. We don't want to have too much spread, right? Well, that and also it uh, helps uh, me stay away from the local constabulary. <laughs> That's true. It's, it has, it's a little hard for you to fit in with the dreadlocks, so I'm not sure oh, that, think, the, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah, might perhaps. be recognizable in, around, perhaps, perhaps. around town. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Please, well, you're you. welcome well, you, to course. stay. I have some questions for Scott, our mayor, who's joined yes. us, and you might have some to add to uh, the conversation. Might, uh, yeah. and might stick around and sure. talk to the uh, Yeah, I, you know, you, 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 never, as well, right? you never know. Yeah. There are some, um, some great things that you might think of. Let me ask you a question. Please, of course. Since we talk about uh, Johnny Depp, eh? what is the, uh, what be your favorite movie, Johnny Depp movie? My favorite Johnny Depp movie. Oh, it's Depp. Pirates of the Caribbean. We'll, um, it, we'll put that aside. It, it really mm -hmm. is. I'll tell you the Johnny Depp movie that creeps me out the most is the Charlie and the Chocolate oh, Factory yes, yes, one. Yes, yes. Yeah. I um, he was super creepy and. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> and Mayor, your, your favorite? Well, you know, he did, he did that Whitey Bulger one recently, ah, which yes, was yes, it indeed, was incredible indeed. acting. It, you you couldn't even tell it was him. He looked so much like Whitey, but that agreed, was that was agreed. good. Um, of course, all the Jack Sparrow ones were great. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Bonnie, yours? All the Jack Sparrow ones. Uh, of course. And, uh, of course. course. Yeah. I, will, I will admit that uh, Donny Brasco, remember that? Donny Brasco? Oh, yeah, that was yeah. good. Donny Brasco. Yeah. Watch it if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I, I saw that. It was good. Thank you. Thank yeah. It was a good one. Now, I do have to ask, since you brought brought it up, what do you, um, have you, like, do you read? I know we're outside the library, and I imagine that reading isn't necessarily the captain's favorite pastime. But I'm thinking treasure maps and things. You might have an interest in history that you chase at all. Yes, yes. Oh, very much so. Very much. You're reading a book lately on uh, Mr. Genghis Khan. Yeah, Mr. Genghis Khan. Ah. Genghis Khan is fascinating because he uh, flattened entire civilizations with simply his reputation. Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow admires that. Uh, your reputation speaks for itself. That's, that's a very good point. That is very, very true. Well, I, I love it. Um, Scott, I'm, it's really hard to take our attention away from I know, you can't things. transition to, know, to serious. I don't know how to smoothly transition the conversation, <laughs> right. but I... It's the mayor, it's the mayor. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but we do have some great um, updated city business I just wanted to touch base on. One of the things that I saw um, was that there was um, some funding released by the state for taxi and livery services, which folks who might follow the captain of mine right need so they don't have to drive home, right? They, if they're um, inviting, they might need a, to service. Um, anything about that that you want folks who might be local livery services to, to know? Well, there's a, there's a couple things. I think Bonnie's taking advantage of that as well, that grant. But um, from the city, the city side, we're putting it out just, uh, you know, as, you know, helping out the, uh, the liveries and the, and the cabs who might, might be suffering otherwise. So we've got 
you know, we've got the information on our website, and uh, if anybody has, has any questions, they can call my office or Tina Cassidy at Planning. She's been running with it. So, you know, it's, it's more, it's, the, the state's been very supportive, and, you know, Governor Baker, I think he's really doing a great job um, loosening up and uh, creating opportunities for, for people who need it. Great. Bonnie, tell us a little bit about how that money is being used at the library. Uh, we're just looking into it. They had mentioned that they're going to release funds um, yeah. for municipalities with who have needs for deliveries. So we're so. always looking at ways to ex kind of extend the library into the Great. deeper into the city and whether that'll yeah. be an option. So we're kind of looking for them to release an RFP and yeah. uh, we'll kind of follow it up from there. Good. But well, we It's great to see the you know, the state doing so much. Yeah. I love seeing that, uh, yeah. that, that happen. Um, this might be a question really for Scott or for Bonnie. I'm not quite sure what, but um, we have had a couple of people who were um, with the library who have taken other positions and are um, leaving us. Um, will we be replacing those positions at this point or will the responsibilities be given to other folks? I think, uh, you know, we're in a pandemic environment and we kind of yep. look at how we're restructuring for also a post-pandemic mm -hmm. world and we're deeply committed to providing, you know, fantastic library yep. services. So, you know, we're kind of taking a step back and looking okay. at how to do that, you know, most effectively. Yep. Good. So. All right. Well, keep us posted on, on our progress there. So Absolutely. that's great. Um, I also noticed there, and I'm, this isn't really so much a question, Scott, but I just want to make an observation. There's a meeting coming up this week, I think on the 10th, for Northeast Metro Tech School that I saw on the website um, to get information. We've talked a lot about on this show and others back to school, but it's been very focused on the schools that are located in Woburn. But Northeast is the public school choice for vocational school for students living in Woburn. So I just wanted to draw attention to that meeting. So families who are looking for that, that information is on the city website. That's good, excellent. Yeah, and we just had, a, they had a kickoff meeting this morning at the schools at eight o'clock. Uh, that I attended with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent and the assistant superintendent of curriculum to kick off uh, the training. There's 10 days, the 10 days training that they're going to be uh, undergoing before school starts. So that was a kickoff at eight, which was really uh, a, an uplifting uh, experience. And, and uh, you know, we, we appreciate what the teachers and the staff, the principals, the custodians, what all they're doing and, uh, you know, the circumstances that they're going to be working on it because it's going to be extremely challenging um, and uh, you know I know they're up for the uh, they're up for the task it's not going to be easy but I've got a lot of confidence in the teachers and their commitment to the kids so you know uh, with the support of administration and support of my office city council school committee I think we're you know we're gonna we're gonna be all right do some good stuff yep. I have to say I am um, I admire all the work of the teacher and the staff but the custodian staff in particular I just you know taking care of hundreds of children and cleaning up after mm -hmm. them under normal circumstances mm -hmm. is a really challenging task and now to do it in a way that is extra level of diligence is just incredible and the bus drive is like you don't want to forget yeah. about anything but anybody yes. or anyone who's really going to be stepping up they, they've got a they've got a uh, a, a a, a difficult task coming up too so we appreciate their work and you know they're special kind of people those bus drivers I know we all know and have had favorites but they they step up too so oh the bus drivers are so fun I we've had some very good ones over the years the children we've been very fortunate and yeah. they become a little bit part of our family they and the do. community you see them you know you, you, you leave your children to them you sort of say here take them <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, it's a, both a moment of celebration and also a little bit of a moment of, uh, you know, uh, you know, concern as, as we do that. So um, particularly for younger right. uh, yeah. folks, obviously. Um, we also know that the um, we mentioned earlier, the Lions Club Parade is canceled for all recognizable, um, logical reasons. But um, there has been some questions. Trick or treating seems like the kind of activity that you can do with a distance and outside, and mm -hmm. we can find ways as community. Is there? Any, do you anticipate that not being possible? Or I, I don't have any. I don't have any reason to. To like you said, you, you certainly can ensure social distancing. I think parents go out with their children, uh, so I, I don't see. Jack, I don't see any reason that we would have to cancel Halloween. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I don't see much of a reason why not to. Yeah. I'd be very disappointed, Captain, if you were in favor of canceling Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the, 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 the be Halloween. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's got to be. I, I, I think we can do that responsibly. I think we'll just have to, you know, as the time comes, we'll just make sure we have some regulations, protocols in place. The police will be out, and they they always are on, on a regular year. So they're, they're really helpful in the, in the neighborhoods that become more, uh, you, you know, more, more traveled. But uh, the Halloween parade was... You know, I don't want to say it was a no-brainer, but we can't—you you can't do it because it's not allowed yet. 
Uh, the next decision, of course, will be Festival on the Common, and that, you know, at this point, that I don't think that's going to be any different. Unfortunately, you hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's still uh, those large gatherings aren't allowed until phase four, and we don't have a green light on that at this point. So. Yeah, I think it's um, realistic, but you know, I do love the creativity of the community and I'm certain that all of us can sure. come up. I mm -hmm. have seen, um, uh, I think Patricia Kelly was trying to do something with small businesses through town. I'm not sure if there's any um, She came to my that. office the, the, the day after, uh, you know, s something showed up and she's really gung-ho, but it's, she, she's going to try to figure something out, but the parade's not even not even on the table no and it and it understandably shouldn't be i think that's logical there is a scarecrow decorating contest that's that great. the lions um, great. club is doing to raise funds and it'll be a fun you know hopefully yeah. people can walk around the community and see that so certainly and encourage that but um thank you we plan for a uh, fantastic one next year right? oh that's right. the, the, you know bigger better yeah. absolutely <laughs> that'll be the best parade ever that that we have we might have to have a lot of you know piracy pirates coming along and following along with that that's awesome maybe even a pub crawl yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking yeah. like the way scott thinks for yeah. <laughs> halloween isn't all for the kids that's right <laughs> just definitely to remind not. ourselves definitely not. No. i'll actually never forget the time that there was a little trick-or-treating um down on Hart Street happens to be one of the streets that quite a lot of people visit and there's the houses are a little closer together yeah. I think and one year um, they were giving out to the adults only of course little little nip <laughs> bottles oh, yeah. uh, to, to help us all get through the it was a cold night right. so they yeah. were keeping everybody warm what was the address <laughs> on that one again <laughs> that's right you have to look for it yeah. I love it let's sniff it out you will find it indeed, I have no doubt indeed. people will invite you there will be no problem I'll be there tomorrow that's great. A couple other quick questions for you, um, Scott. There was a couple weeks ago we talked about the Handicap Commission and that you had some people volunteer to reinvigorate that. Any um, idea when we might have some meetings there or anything? Uh, the the six names will be read in to, to City Council's meeting tonight. The six new names are being read in uh, for first reading. They'll go to committee and my, I anticipate that uh, they'll be up and running October 1st. Yeah, by the time they do the committee meeting, then they have to send it back to the full council. Yeah, so, but not, not far. So yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. And the, the, the six are very excited to, to uh, be a part of it, and it's, it's, uh, it'll be a good uh, start. I'm really glad to see that. Captain, what ward are you in in Woburn? Your ward. Ward. Yes. Are you will I know you don't want to tell us exactly your location, but I, I'm assuming you vote and such. Of course, of course. Right, of course, of course right? Uh, I'm not sure the ward. I uh, just show up and I uh, put my... Uh, <laughs> We choice in a little slot and we go, eh? I, I vote I, for you, man. Thank you. I, I love it. Yeah. Scott, because the other important thing that's happening at City Council tonight is Ward 4. That's right. Alder person, alderman, I guess is the official title. Yeah, they um, have uh, about 10, can, right? 10 candidates and they're, you know, they've gone through the interview process and tonight's the final uh, selection. So it'll be interesting. I have no idea who they're going to pick, and I don't, I don't know if uh, the council knows who, who it's going to be. It's a, it's a real diverse crowd, uh, and, and they're all, they've all been around and have experience in their own way, so it'll be interesting to see who gets selected. Well, I'm really um, excited to hear about it because what that tells me is we have so many people who want to serve the community, and we're starting to see more and more people get involved in our local community efforts and politics and things, and it's lovely to see that. It is great. Um, so many people step up and... It makes a harder choice, I'm sure, but yeah. um, but we appreciate that. That's great. Um, I think um, I think that's all the questions, Scott, that I had um, on top of mind from from my side in terms of asking. Any other updates that you'd like to share with us? Uh, w w w the we are updating the city's website on the um, the you know the, the guidance that the governor gave us on on um, when you can open schools the the red the green the yellow and the white so we'll be we'll be doing an update on that either today or tomorrow finalizing it where it's it's uh relates to Wuben so you can go right and find you know how Wuben um, instead of searching through the 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 state's documents it'll be on our page it'll be Wuben will be specifically there listed next to the state so you can see where we stand with the averages so that's one update, and the fire station's coming along. Uh, you can see the site work up there, and, and uh, you know I just keep reminding people that uh, it's 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 a long progress and process. There's 35 acres up there. We're using three, so there's still 32 acres of open space that uh, you're welcome to use now and and uh, enjoy it. Yeah, that's wonderful. And the other three acres will be replaced elsewhere, right? The other three acres are being replaced. Yeah.
Yeah, so that's one. I know we're very excited as a community. It's going to, we all, the dance clear, isn't it built now? You know, I know we're yeah. all going to be a little bit impatient. Right. Because um, the, the fire department is When the final working, product's so. there, people will be really happy with it. The firefighters, of course, will be happy. The residents will be better served. And, and uh, it'll reflect very well in the community. That's great. Do we have a date we're targeting by which that will be the open? The, um, the site work should be finished in November. The construction will start, we're hoping, uh, April, and then we've got about 12 months of work to do. So what's that, April of 22? You want me to do math? I, I don't know. know. I, you know, it's, uh, you know, we're a year and a half away. April of 22, right? about, yeah. 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 yeah, that's great. Well, it's something very important to look forward to. Definitely. So. Um, really excited about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we had elections recently, right? And we have um, more elections coming up in November. So I'm sure we'll have Bill back on to talk about um, the detailed action. But everything seemed to flow well. They I did a great. The clerks. Ready. They did a great job over the uh, ten day period. It was more like two weeks, but uh, they got flooded with the mail in ballots. Uh, and Bill, you should probably have Bill on again. I don't need to tell you, but. Uh, maybe before the election he could talk to you. Um, the early voting wasn't as popular as it's been in the past because of all the other options people have to vote. Yeah. So um, he can talk more about it. But it, we, we think that might have been, you want to give people all the options they have to vote, but it might have been a little bit of overkill with, you know, the ease of... Um, maybe not as many days needed yeah, or something. With the okay. ease of um, mail-in voting, the, the early voting isn't, wasn't quite as prominent as in years past. Good. Well, that's good to know and glad to see everybody had an opportunity to participate in that Definitely. process. So, yep. Great. Well, thank you all. As always, please raise a glass and a toast to <laughs> our guest today, oh, particularly the, the captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we really appreciate you coming today. And as always, Woburn, please continue to take care of each other.